unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We ought to keep our eyes glorying in the Lord. Glory ye in the Lord. And uh, I just got a new book the other day. Actually, I just got finished reading it. And then I needed a hard copy of it, so I ordered a hard copy of it because I got a paperback that has the, the cover falling off of it. It's called The Glory of Christ. And if you ever want to read a book that's a good book, um, read your Bible. And it'll get you to the glory of Christ. And then you can read the glory of Christ and it'll, it'll enjoy that. We are in the book of Ephesians today. We are going to look at the book of Ephesians. We're going to look at one verse, and we're going to key in on one word. We're going to look at one verse and key in on one word. And uh, that is not my normal way of doing things, but when I get done, you will have uh, hopefully learned a little something about some things. So if you find a scripture in the epistle of the Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians, uh, it, 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 it should become evident to you by the time we get uh, completed with the message, two truths about Bible study. Number one, words mean what words mean. I've said that multiple times and I will continue to say that words mean what words mean. Do not make up your own definition of words. They mean what they mean. And number two, every word matters. Every word matters. And I say this based upon uh, a, a word or some words that see, a word that seemed to jump out at me, jumped off the page and into my heart as I was reading the book of Ephesians back on Monday. Now I have read the book of Ephesians. Uh, most every day for the last month or so. I, it's, it's, it's only a few chapters. I do not know why when we say we want to study something, we don't continuously read over it and continually, day after day, read over it, read over it, read over it, so that we become so familiar with it that we uh, get to know it. Matter of fact, if you uh, if you are doing the, what the Rock of Ages Bible studies uh, that is uh, and that I've tried to get some of us to do, if you're doing it, and I hope some of y'all are doing those, and uh, you will find that you'll read that chapter and you'll find the answer within that chapter within the book of the Bible. Yes. And and why do I do it that way? Why do they do it that way? Because the number one thing you and I need to do is know the Bible. Many a person, it seems that the, the Bible is strange to them, but it's because they're strangers to the Bible. Come on. They do not spend much time in the Word of God. And so uh, this, this word jumped out as I was reading through uh, the book of Ephesians. And, and uh, the one that's the letter to the saints at Ephesus and the faithful in Christ Jesus. And, and our course of Scripture is found in verse number 1 of chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are in Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now, I, I find many words in uh, this portion of Scripture, and uh, eight of them only contain two letters. I asked if I count it correctly. There's an, of, by, to, at, and in. Now some of them are used more than one time, but there's, it's used, there's eight times that two letter words are used in our Bible. Many a times we'll just overlook a little two letter word like it doesn't mean much. Uh, but uh, this, these words mean must. Each of these words has a purpose. For every word is in your Bible is on purpose and for a purpose. You need you and I need to read this uh, and understand this reality that every word of God is on purpose and for a purpose. 
Now, some of these words that are here define a position. A position. Uh, let me say there's some that define a position of a post and some that define a position of placement. Uh, there you'll see a position of a post and apostle of Jesus Christ. That is Paul's post. That is what he does. Uh, and apostle of Jesus Christ teaches us uh, that Paul is an apostle. Not the only apostle. He is not the apostle. Now he is the apostle to the Gentiles. Romans chapter 11 will teach us. But he is an apostle. Uh, and not just any old apostle. Not just any old sent one. But he's an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul declares himself to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. That is Paul declares his position or his post. And then we will find the position of place. In some other words that we will find, we'll find at Ephesus and in Christ Jesus. That little word at, that little word in, they mean that it is a place. You say, well, this is, this is simple. This is first grade stuff. Let me say, sometimes we need to get back to the basics. And we need to understand some things. For by, the Bible tells us that God has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'd ask you this question. Are you in Christ Jesus? Jesus. That is a place. That is a place of position. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are where He is, and He is, and He is seated in the, on the right hand of the majesty on high. He is in heavenly places. Seated on the right hand of the majesty on high. You are in the presence of God the Father. So when you and I speak as we do, or watch what we watch, or wear what we wear, or let, let me say, I forgot to say, go where we go, you and I need to remember that we are in the presence of God the Father. For Jesus is in heavenly places, seated on the right hand of the throne of grace, on the right hand of the Father. In the presence of the throne of God. I ask you this. Where are you to die? Now I know you're at Victorious Life Baptist Church. But are you in Christ Jesus? Are you seated in heavenly places? If you are truly saved, you are in the presence of God. So there's these words of position. But today, I want to observe a word of process. Process. Now, there are two of them in this verse. One is about the process of where. You say the process of where. The word is to. And the other is about the process of how. The word is by. And we're going to look at the process of how. The word by. How to get where you ought to be. How to get where you ought to be. This phrase here is by the will of God. And it came alive to me on Monday afternoon as I was reading, as I told you a little while ago, and it, and it penetrated and permeated my head, and it penetrated and permeated my heart, and I've been meditating on it all week long. The word by, it is how we do something. And this phrase by the will of God describes the process or channel by which Saul, the one who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, obtained mercy and grace and became Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ. He went 
from an attacker of the church to an apostle of the church. By the will of God. That little word, by, is so important. It's, let me explain this word, by. Let me say it is how to describe a process or channel of getting somewhere. How to get where you ought to be. And I came to, church this, to the church house this morning uh, to meet with the church. I came by a car. How many of y'all came by a car? How you came by the way of either Cold Scott Street or Dunn Avenue? How many of y'all came by the way of Cold Scott Street or Dunn Avenue? And, uh, and I entered by or through a doorway. How many of y'all came by or through a doorway? Let me say the word through is a synonymous word for by. Matter of fact, uh, if you, uh, the process or channel of salvation is for by grace are you saved through faith. You know what I found out? It's the same word. When I looked it up and I got to studying it, the, the word by means through. The word through means by. They're synonymous. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. The process or channel of salvation is by grace, through faith. And we know according to the letter to Titus that the Apostle Paul declared that after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, that salvation was not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy uh, He saved us by the washing of regeneration. You notice that word, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You'll notice that if you were to look at that, you will find that there, that would mean, and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's just an addition, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. By, uh, by the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Salvation is not by works of our own righteousness but by grace. It is by cleansing and it is by conversion. Some would say, oh, I, I don't think it's by cleansing and conversion. What well, he said, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. There is salvation, we know it's not by works, but grace works. Hallelujah. And if, your, if grace did not work, it would not work. And you would be stuck without the work of God being done. But thank God, grace works. This is the process or channel. It is by, by. And, and before I go any further, let me stop and make it clear that salvation is not by works of righteousness. It's not by us going about to establish our own righteousness and not submitting ourselves to the righteousness of God. That is what the Jews did. They had gone about to establish their own righteousness and did not submit themselves uh, to the righteousness of God. But it is by grace and grace works righteousness. Matter of fact, in the book of Titus, in the book of uh, Titus in chapter 2, in a, a verse uh, 11, uh, Titus teaches us that, that grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. That is washing. That is cleansing. That is that start at salvation. God teaches us to deny the things that ought not be. And it also, grace teaches us that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And that we should be looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We are new creatures by grace. Yeah, and we are, we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Do never, never, never let somebody make light of grace. 
Grace does something. Grace is not a get out of hell call. Grace is a change of, of an old and a new, an old creature to a new creature. Grace does something. Grace works. It would be a bad thing for God to say, I'm going to deliver you from the penalty of darkness and not deliver you from the power of darkness. But by grace, we are saved. He shall save his people from their sin. Which therefore, it gets me to my first point, and I've just probably preached my first point. It is the priming process to become an apostle was by the will of God. The priming process to become an apostle was by the will of God. The starting place of becoming an apostle was by the will of God. The channel was the will of God. For the Bible teaches us, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. The Apostle Paul had something stirring in him that was a part of this priming process. Something got stirred up in the Apostle Paul. You say, what happened and when did it happen? Well, I am so glad that you asked because God was stirring in him from that day when Stephen was stoned. In Acts 7, in verse 58, and they cast him out of the city and stoned him, and the witnesses uh, laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay down this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And Saul was consented to their death. Saul was consented to his death. Saul was there. Saul was part of it. Saul was, everybody laid down their garments at this young man Saul's feet. It started stirring something up in Saul. How can this man die for this one that he doesn't even know? He's never seen face to face. How can Stephen go through all this and say, lay it not to their charge? That's a real Christian. That's somebody who really believes. That's something different about him. There's been enough of them that have backed down and bowed down. And, and oh yes, they would, they would say, oh yeah, well I'll recant, I'll recant. There's enough of them that have done that. But this one was different. It started a story in the Apostle Paul's life. Now let me say this, there's, not only do I find the stoning of Stephen, but I find the startling shining that stirred him up. The startling shining. You say, what are you talking about? That, that, that was alliteration. The stoning of Stephen, the startling shining. That was pretty good. Uh, but the shining is the light shine. In Acts chapter 9, in verse number 3. And as he journeyed, he came near the mass, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? That stirred something up in him. For the next thing he says, Who art thou, Lord? Who are you that's talking to me? I'm falling to the earth because of a light that's startled me, that is so bright, brighter than the noonday sun. And I, now I'm on the earth and I'm wondering, Who is this talking to me? Right. It stirred something up in him. And as Jesus spoke, he said, I am Jesus and thou persecutest. Uh, it is hard for you to kick against the pricks. He said, Lord, what will thou have me to do? Something changed. Yeah. He was wanting to know who he was before. Now he's wanting to know what do you want from me? I, something changed. I, I tell you what changed. It went from just being a stirring to a salvation. To a salvation. A spectacular salvation. He was working his will by grace to bring Paul or bring Saul to make him Paul. It starts. The priming process to become an apostle was by the will of God. 
The priming process for you to be all that God wants you to be is started out by the will of God. You must be born again. Oh, yes. You must be born again. A new creature. God is not going to take an old creature and make him what he wants him to be until he becomes a new creature. His first and foremost desire for your life is that you be born again. If you are not saved, now is the appointed time. Today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. If there's never been a change in your life, then you need to get born again. Because if somebody as big as the Lord Jesus Christ moves into somebody as little as you or me, it's going to change sometimes. Yep. Come on. Now we've already discussed it. Not everybody changed at the same speed and in the same way, but they change toward holiness. They change toward godliness. They change toward righteousness. If you is what you was, you ain't. That's how that one preacher said it down south. If you is what you was, you ain't. You ain't born again if you're still the same thing you used to be. Number one point is a priming process to become what God wants you to be. It's through stirring and through salvation. It is by the will of God. Not only do I find that priming process but I find number two is there is a preparation process to become what God wants you to be. By the will of God. Now Saul wanted the will of God. Matter of fact, I will tell you, he asked the question, Lord, what will thou have me do? I want to know what exactly you want from me. I'm I'm here on the ground, blind, unable to do anything now, and all I can do is lay here on the ground, startled by the shining, and startled by your speaking. What do you want from me? Paul said, or Saul said, I want to know the will of God. And let me say this, that sometimes that's why you don't know the will of God. It's because you don't want to know the will of God. If you behold his glory, get in the Bible, get in the, get in the Gospels, and look for the glory of Christ, and say, open out my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of the word of God. And behold the glory of Christ. And say, I just want to know what your will is. And you're startled by his shining. You're startled by his speaking. And, then, and all of a sudden, guess what? God brings you down to where you are laying there saying, I just want to know what your will is. He might tell you his will. He might show you his will. Saul wanted the will of God. And God had chosen him to be an apostle. He says in verse 15 of Acts 9, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name among the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name. Say. God had chosen him. God had a purpose for him. And let me say this. God has a purpose for you. And wants to prepare you to do His will. He wants to prepare you to do His will. And I've got a few things I have found in the Scripture that Paul went through Paul or Saul being prepared to be the Apostle Paul that will go through your life also if you're going to be, if you're willing to do His will. The, some, the process of becoming an apostle, Paul, first process I see is there was suffering. Suffering. You say, how do you see that? 
Did not verse 16 of chapter 9 say, I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake? Before he became the apostle Paul, he was suffering. Matter of fact, it, it tells us in verse uh, uh, 19, and when he had received me, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days that the disciples would direct Damascus and straightway preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not he, is it not this he that uh, destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came uh, hither to, for that intent that he might bring them bound into the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. Now watch this. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. Sounds like some suffering going on here. But their laying awake was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. And his disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. Do you notice that there is suffering if you want to do the will of God? Paul, an apostle, by the will of God. For him to become the apostle the will of God was suffering. The process is by. There is the priming process by the stirring, by salvation. There is in the preparation process by suffering. We say that we want to fulfill the will of God for our lives. We want to be what God wants us to be. We want to see our friends and our family saved. 